Fort of the Damned has long solidified itself as the greatest way of earning gold in Sea of Thieves, so when I found out that Season 9 made it easier for smaller crews to complete them, I only had one question in mind. How fast can my friend and I conquer the fort, and how long will it take us to earn 1 million gold? So we put it to the test, and this is what happened. Brace yourself, because this was a crazy journey, and I still have no idea how we didn't lose everything. Starting off this adventure, we knew we would be putting a huge target on our back. Not only is the Fort of the Damned highly sought after, but we were going to have to complete at least six of them. On top of this, seeing a Reaper 5 ship sat there is bound to grab someone's attention. The first thing we did was raise Reapers and start stocking up our ship on supplies. This was because if we got into a fight, we would need to be adequately stocked in order to defend our precious loot. So I purchased a storage crate and went around the whole outpost filling it up. But once I was finished, I realized realized this wasn't going to be enough, so I swiftly started up Tooltale 5 from a pirate's life and stormed on over to Davy Jones's cloud. As I sat there for about 10 to 15 minutes, letting the Black Pearl defeat the ships for me, I found myself growing quite bored, so I opened up my phone to play my favourite game, Raid Shadow Legends. Now I know you've heard a lot about this game and you may be wondering what it's all about, so let me give you some insight and be your guide on Raid's latest update. But first, I'd like to bring to you a quick list of the top three most badass champions that I like. First up, you may have heard of her in a previous video of mine, Ursula the Mourner. Personally, I think she looks sick, and on top of this, her signature skill revives fallen allies and boosts their turn meter to get them back into the action faster. As well as this, she has the ability to decrease enemy attack while increasing her allies' attack damage. She is definitely one of the greatest champions out there. Next up, we have Astralon. Now, while he may not be the greatest champion, he definitely is one of the coolest looking champs. He gives me Dark Warlord vibes, as if he can demand respect from anyone he wants, instantly gaining the advantage. He also has the ability to revive fallen allies if one of his skills kills an enemy, which paired with Ursula can make an insane team. And lastly, we have Countess Lix, decorated in this gorgeous silver and green dragon-like armor, with abilities that can decrease allies' cooldowns, as well as place weakened debuffs on the enemies. So if you can, definitely grab your hands on one of these champions. And as of their recent update, Day, the Call of the Arbiter event is in full swing. To celebrate this epic limited series, Raid's adding some of the new characters from the series as champions you can play with in-game. The first one being Artak, a mighty orc warlord. And what's super cool is Artak is going to be available for everyone for free. Isn't that nice? Everyone say thank you Raid in the comments. All you have to do to claim him is just log in to Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th. That's over 1 month, so go check it out and remember all you need to do is log in for 7 days to get Artak for free. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? New players, use my link or scan the QR code on the screen, and you'll get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. I look forward to seeing you in-game. By the time we were done, we had obtained well over 1,000 cannibals, enough wood to build a whole new ship, and barely enough food to keep my crewmate from starving. But we were happy with this, so we moved on to start our Fort of the Damned challenge. And lucky for us, we turned around to see a glistening skeleton fleet staring us right in the face. We knew that this would be a fast way of obtaining the skulls we needed, and could save us from doing more than one Skull of Destiny voyage, so we set course for this event in efforts to defeat it as fast as possible. Skeleton head noises. But I'm trying to do that. And you just lost all of the loot you got. Typically, skeleton fleets will reward 3-5 to five ritual skulls, which would have been perfect for what we were trying to achieve, but the game had different plans and only gave us two, and because of this, we now had to go on the search for more than one Skull of Destiny to acquire the remaining skulls we needed. But as we were about to set sail on our voyage, we noticed there was actually an active Fort of the Damned on the server, so we did what any normal person would do and sailed over. After sinking the brig and dealing with the tucking pirates, we completed the fort, took the loot, and continued our voyage for the Skull of Destiny. And once we had everything we needed, we wasted no time and got straight to work. Placing all of our kegs for Greymarrow in their respective positions, and having our tridents at the ready, we started our first fort.
right, like right here is the spot. Oh, you just. Oh, I thought you just deleted the loot. <laughs> Where shall I put What? After just over one hour of game time, we had exhausted all of our skulls and completed six Fort of the Damned. Albeit we lost one, but we also stole one at the beginning, so it's still six forts worth of loot. Anyway, we had been lucky enough not to have been counted by anyone so far, so we were fully ready for a galleon or a kraken to spawn on us, blowing up our kegs and sending us to the bottom of the ocean. And then this happened. Yeah, but if it's treacherous plunder, it's worth much more in commendation. Yeah. Oh my god. Why? That was too scary. That had to be one of the most heart-stopping moments I have ever had in this game. Six Fort of the Dams and a skeleton fleet sat on my ship with four stronghold kegs at the front of my bowsprit, all while fighting a skeleton ship. I was prepared for it all to end and I was expecting it to end. In my head I had already lost the loot, but we prevailed and we managed to get through it unharmed. And after that it was time to speed towards our destination, Reaper's Hideout. This is where we would harpoon the loot onto our rowboat, bringing the loot inside and selling it as fast as our stubby little human fingers could move. Just as we had almost sold it all, we heard the scariest sound someone in our position could ever hear. A cannon shot. We were being ambushed by an enemy ship, and not only that, a skeleton curse ship. Meaning these guys know how to fight, and they are not to be underestimated. We swiftly tried to keep selling, but we were forced into hand-to-hand -hand combat when the pirate pushed into the hideout. Our kegs had exploded, our ship, along with all of our supplies, were gone, and we had lost the remaining of the loot in the hideout. My terrible aim with the flintlock had cost us the fight, as well as the lack of foresight to see the issue with our kegs sitting on our ship. But thankfully, we had just about met our goal of selling over 1 million gold in loot. To be specific, we made a total of 1,010,061 gold in just over one hour, completing six Fort of the Dams and a skeleton fleet. This journey was a pretty crazy one to say the least, but if you enjoyed, a like would be terribly appreciated, as well as subscribing for more of this content. I'm trying out a new style of content, so your feedback would be very helpful and allow me to bring you guys the best content in the future. Check out Raid in the description and the pinned comment. Much love everyone.